thank you for taking time to speak to us. Much appreciated. I'm going to give you um, uh, an ethical or moral scenario, and we're going to see how you do, OK? <laughs> Do, do you guys know who Adolf Hitler is? Yes, we do. Oh, yes. Yeah. You say obviously, there are some people that don't know who he is. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Some people fail history. Yeah, they don't think they attended. Um, okay, so Adolf Hitler, okay, it's 1939. You've got a high-powered rifle. Okay, let's, let's pretend you're trained in, in sniper assassination. Um, you've got a high-powered rifle. Um, you've got Hitler in your sights. Knowing what you know now, do you take the shot? One life, one... Hitler life for all the innocent lives that he killed? Yes. No. You definitely. Okay, so two of you say yes, you say no. I'm keen to know why you said no. Um, because, like, these days there's other ways of, like, treating people. And, like, I think it would just be better to, like, lock him up in prison or get him some actual medical treatment or something because there was obviously something wrong with him. Like, obviously you don't have those thoughts for, like, no reason. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, brilliant. Um, and what about you two? Why would you say yes? Um, well, my history teacher really went into detail about what he did, and it's just wrong on so many levels. It's just bad. If it was back then, definitely, yes, I would take the shot, but if it was now, I'd think about what Maria just said. So you, you've obviously gone into the details about the innocent slaughter of blacks, gays, um, you know, disabled people, um, uh, all kinds of creeds, especially the Jewish, six million Jewish, about a third of the world's population of Jews. He really wanted to wipe those out. So is, are, you, are you in a similar mind? Is that why? Yeah, I mean, I never did history, so I don't know that much about it. But <laughs> what I do know, I know he's a bad person. So. OK, um, so let's go back 40 years. OK, so you've got Mrs. Hitler pregnant with Adolf. OK. You've got one shot, and you can take her out, and take out the two innocent lives again to save the 12 million. Do you still take the shot? No, because if she'd raised him differently, things could have turned out different. OK, what about yourself? Yeah, I'm probably the same. I mean, it's not the mum's fault. I mean, I don't really know that much about it, but what <laughs> I... You know, I'm assuming if he'd have been raised slightly different, he probably would have had a different outcome, but I don't know. Some people are just slightly mad. But again, if you take the mother out, then the issue goes away. Um, and now, although she's innocent, uh, you, you're saving 12 million lives. Yeah, but my teacher said um, he was in the First World War as an underage soldier and the gas attack, he shared a gas mask with his friend and that's what sent him slightly loopy, apparently. That's my history teacher's view. I didn't know that much about it. He didn't tell us much in detail about that. But that's what he said exactly. OK. Um, so would you say then that, that looking on a numbers side of it, that you could take those two innocent lives at, the, at that time, knowing that Hitler's still going to do what he did to save the other 12 million or so people that were innocently slaughtered? Yeah, a logical thing you would, wouldn't you? But it's just it's pros and cons, really. It's just... I don't know. Do you, would you say you value... Would you value life? Well, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, I've got a scenario for you. Would you um, sell your eye for a million pounds? Mm. One of your eyes. Uh, it depends <laughs> whether it would go to help someone who's blind. That would, like, if it was going to help someone who's blind, I, would, I wouldn't sell it. I'd give it if it was helping someone who's blind. Okay, okay. I've um, not heard that answer before. That's lovely. What about yourself? Yeah, I would because I'm practically blind anyway. So, <laughs> so you... <laughs> <laughs> so, what you're saying is that they're not much use to you now anyway, so I might as well get a million pounds. And what about yourself? I feel bad now because I'm like, no, I wouldn't sell my eyes. Sorry, I like my eyes. It's the usual response we get. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that makes you, two, you two are unique. It just depends who it was for. Like, if it was helping No one, it's for a million pounds. Um, depends what they would do. With the eye. What do you do? Your pocket. What? Oh, just in your pocket. I am at the time, really. I don't know. No, wait, what happens to the eye, not for a million yeah. <laughs> It's just gone. It's just gone, it's, like it's disappeared. Just been. If it's gone, then no. no. Still give it up. Yeah. Still have the million. Yeah. A million pounds sounds pretty good. What about both eyes for ten million? No, I need to be able to see. Both eyes for ten billion. <laughs> I'm I'm clumsy enough as it is without my eyesight. I'm just pretty. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. No, not no. You value, you value, we value sight, don't yeah, we? Yeah, okay. Just a bit. <laughs> Do you believe we have a soul? A little bit. Depends. No. <laughs> no. Yes. You two, do a little bit. Yes, full on. No. no. Why no? Because, I don't know, like, I don't understand what a soul is really. Like, I've studied psychology and stuff and I just, like, I understand how the brain works and stuff and I just don't really, like, understand it. So, 
not psychology for soul. <laughs> soul, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Would you say you've got there is a there is purpose and will within you? It's uh, there is some individual ness to to us as as human beings well no there is like a mixture like obviously I, I think that our brain has a part that like allows us to create our own reactions to things and our own emotions and stuff but obviously that hasn't been proven yet <laughs> it, um, <laughs> is is uh, is is rape wrong yes 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 wrong all the time regardless what society you're raised in yes well, yeah yeah where does right and wrong come from uh just beliefs and stuff like what we're grown up to believe is where we get our right and wrong from. Okay, so let's take us back to Nazi Germany. Okay, so it, it, it was the law that you could kill a disabled person or a black person or a Jew, okay, or a woman. Does that then make it okay? No. If that's society-based, then surely that logic follows that, that that's, that's the conclusion we come to. Well, yeah, like at that time, that was probably what was considered right. But obviously at our time now, that's what's considered wrong. So we wouldn't allow it to happen. But at that time, it might have been allowed. So again, we're saying that it's kind of subjective, society-based. So what if rape, would rape still be wrong then, though? I don't know. I don't know history enough. <laughs> but but I, I think we would say, OK, it's, it's, it, let's say, is paedophilia wrong? Uh, yeah, at the moment. At the moment. <laughs> I mean, like, in some places, they still marry, like, 14-year-old girls, don't they, in some places? And it's just... It, that culture, that's what they do. They get married young, yeah. but it's it's just... It's everybody's own opinion, really, and everybody's own culture's opinion. Does that make it OK? Just because the society says it, does that make it OK for the individual being affected, as an example? No. no. It just depends on each individual's rights and personal yeah. rights and wrongs. You can't judge on a whole society because just because they belong to that society doesn't mean that they believe personally in those rights and wrongs. It's. Would you say that there's something in us that kind of is, it seems to be objective to right and wrong? <laughs> um... <laughs> Have you, have you have you thought about right and wrong much? Well, yeah, like I obviously. It's psychology. Yeah, like I think about what I think is right and wrong, but I don't. To a certain p point, I don't mind what other people consider right and wrong. But like, obviously, if it kind of overlaps with what I think is right and wrong, then it kind of affects me. But it gets messy, doesn't it? When yeah. when it's whose opinion do we take? It's confusing. It's Every <laughs> single person has their own views on what is right yeah. and wrong, so it it's just. A big mess. Really. Yeah, we do. We do. We all have our own individual perspective on what's right and wrong. However, when we talk about things like rape and pedophilia inside us, we know they're right. They're wrong. Okay, that's um, it's what's called objective morality. Now, as a psychologist, you might not believe that, but when we actually take uh, subjective morality to its logical conclusion, we end up in a right pickle. Um, uh, do you know any of the Ten Commandments by any chance? A few of them. Yeah. Some. How many can we name? Thou shalt not steal, that's the only one I can... And kill, um... Thou shalt not um, worship engraved images. I remember that one. Well done. Commandment number two. Name in vain. Commandment number three, well done. Something about sloth. <laughs> sloth, that's um, our Ice Age. <laughs> <laughs> Something about uh, respecting parents. I think elders. Was one. Yeah, it was elders. Uh, absolutely, that's uh, commandment number five. You should uh, honour your mother and father. Yeah, that was it, that was it. Um, I should know this. Whereas I love thyself, is that one? That's that was the the golden rule, but it wasn't one of the the Ten Commandments. I went to I went to a Church of England primary school. I should remember this, but I can't. You've done really well. You've done really well. Okay, what we'll do is we're going to look at we're going to look against the uh, standard of the Bible, the Ten Commandments, and we'll see how how we fare. Um, how many lies have you told in your entire life? That's uncountable. Yeah, the too many. God knows. <laughs> he does. <laughs> That's the third commandment, blasphemy. What do we, uh, what, uh, what do we, um, uh, what do we call someone that tells countless lies, specifically? A liar. Yeah, yeah, a liar. Depends what kind of lies. I mean, if they're little white lies, then it doesn't really matter. No, big, big, bold-faced lies. Oh yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> big, big fat liar. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever stolen anything, irrespective of its size or value? No, I don't think so. Have you downloaded music? No. Never stole a pencil or a penny or a sweet or anything like that. No, it's just not my style. Amazing, well done. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. What about yourself? Uh, yeah, probably. Just something little, not like anything major. What about yourself? Yeah. Okay, what do we call people that steal things more specifically again? It depends. I mean, if it's just like a pen, it doesn't really matter. 
if it's like if my you know, grandma gave me that pen though you know and it was a real sentimental pen then it would matter wow if you have a sentimental pen that's that <laughs> my wife has sentimental pens she really does i'm not even joking honestly color coordinated and everything but no it's, 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 we, we, it's a thief is what you would call yeah. have you ever taken god's name in vain either said for jc or god go so yeah <laughs> yeah very possibly yeah. omg is quite a, it seems to be quite a popular saying recently um it's called it's the third commandment it's called blasphemy so what we do is we, we reduce god's name to a swear word you know rather than saying something Someone like Hitler or Stalin or you know some perverse murderer. We, we use the name of God, you know, that gave us you know birds and bees and creation and life and music and colours and beauty and, and nature, um, and we reduce it to a cuss word. It's quite serious. Um, <clears throat> this is the one that got me. Jesus said, if you ever look at someone and, and lust after them, you've committed adultery with them in your heart. Okay, so we're looking at the thought life now. Have you ever looked in lust? Very possibly yes. I'll be honest. I don't really know what that means. Um, to to. to, to in the street oh. and got dummy's heart. Not really, actually, no. Oh, I feel like a bad person, yeah, all the time. <laughs> You've never, you've never looked in lust. You've never looked upon somebody. Not even, not even like um, what's that guy's name off TV? I forget his name. There's too many. Yeah. <laughs> you name one. Channing Tatum. Oof. No. So, okay, so anyway, um, God, essentially what we're doing is well, God looks at your thought life, not just the, the, the deeds that you do and the words that you say, but the thought life. What we've done is we've looked at four of the Ten Commandments, and if we looked at those, um, and I'm not judging you because I've broken every single one, um, but we've looked at it in... in, in if God were to judge you by that standard, you know, he'd judge you as a lying thief and a blasphemy and an adulterer at heart, okay. Um, would you be innocent or guilty if you were judged by that standard on Judgment Day, do you think? I'd be guilty if that was the standard, yeah. Yeah, yeah guilty. Definitely. That, that's, that's the standard that, that, that is laid down by the Bible. That's why the Bible says that there is no, no, no one good on earth, not one. Okay, which is pretty, it stands to reason when we look at that standard. Okay, God's moral perfection is, is, is perfection. Um, do you know what God did so that guilty sinners wouldn't have to go to hell at all? Are you aware of that? No, no idea. No idea. You went to a Church of England school and you don't know. A long time ago. <laughs> what about you? No, I have no idea. What about you? No. Okay, um, 2,000 years ago, um, God incarnate came down as a man in the form of Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, he walked the earth and he performed miracles. He, he raised people from the dead. He healed lepers um, to testify that he was God. Okay, he, he led a sinless life. He didn't lust. He didn't steal. He didn't lie. He didn't cheat. Okay, um, and then he voluntarily went on the cross. Okay, and he, and, he, and he died. and It was a sacrifice. He gave his life to take upon the sins of the world. Now, I couldn't sacrifice myself for us because I'm a sinner, but he was innocent, so he could, he could pay that fine. Okay, um, <clears throat> so he's paid. We're, we're going to uh, sorry, we're guilty in the eyes of a moral judge. Um, we're going to God's prison eternity, for eternity in hell. Okay, but Jesus paid our fine. Okay, now God can legally dismiss our case. Okay, what we need to do is we need to repent, which means to change your mind and, and face towards God and, and trust in Jesus. Does that does that make sense? Kind of in the sense that He paid for it. Yeah. Um, so as soon as you repent and you trust in Jesus, um, you, you're what's called born again. God will give you new desires and a new heart, so you'll start to thirst after the things that he thirsts after, righteousness and goodness, and you'll start to despise the things that you once liked, lusting, lying, hate and deceit. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. vaguely. <laughs> um, which bit of it didn't make sense? I know you're a psychology student and you like you like evolution quite a lot. Or maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't like it, but um, obviously it's probably something that you that you gravitate towards. Am I, am I, would I be right in saying that? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, I've got um, a, a DVD for you to take away anyway, which I think you'll find interesting. It's called Evolution Versus God, um, and it's where um, it's it's where we, as a ministry, we go to all of the leading evolutionary scientists, evolutionary biologists, and we ask them for one shred of evidence for macroevolution, which is one kind turning into another. Um, what they do is they tend to provide um, microevolution, which is um, you know you get a dog with long hair, short hair. You get the dog, the wolf, the coyote, the fox. They're all within that breed and they say that if you give that millions of years that dog will turn into a kangaroo um, and that's what they say they say you're just as related to a banana as you are to each other okay there's there's, there's no evidence for that for whatsoever and if you take it to its logical conclusion i think it, it becomes apparent and um, you got you're ready to go out aren't you yeah <laughs> um do, he has a handbag big enough for a cd oh, yeah. enough yeah you are you less likely to lose it you, 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 Slightly to lose it, yeah. So I'm going to give you. A, um, are you going to? Are you going to? Are you going to think about what we've talked about tonight? Is that? Uh, yeah. 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 I really. Dreams. <laughs> definitely wasn't expecting this on my <laughs> night out. So. That was the idea. No, I really appreciate you taking time to speak to us. Thank you so much. I'm glad we did it because it's like it's so interesting to just listen to different people's thoughts and opinions and yeah. stuff. Yeah. No, I appreciate your your views and your time, and you seem like lovely girls, and I'll be praying for you definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank Have you. a lovely night. It's lovely to meet. You.